Welcome along guys. Well today is an exciting day. Today is my first ride on the new Aprilia RS660 and just look at it. It looks amazing. Absolutely fantastic. I've been very very lucky because Wheels Motorcycles, links below, have very kindly lent me not only this brand new RS660 but also the new Tuono 660 so I've been doing a selection of videos comparing these bikes I've already done a first ride on the Tuono link above but this is my first ride on the RS660 and uh, just riding here I'm loving it but I don't want to give too much away just yet get yourself a cuppa make yourself comfortable because now we're going to be riding the fantastic, oh shit, giving it away, RS660. Chopsy, roll the intro. Look at it. It looks a million dollars. What I like about this bike is it doesn't look like a, a budget middleweight sort of sports bike. Well, it isn't really a budget middleweight sports bike because it costs ten and a half thousand pounds, but it just looks amazing. I really, really like this colour scheme. This purple is just lovely in the flesh. This red really pops. It's really, really good. Already, I'm loving it. Already, I'm loving it. But don't, let's just jump on it. Let's jump on it and find out what it's like to actually ride, shall we? What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to be doing a direct comparison video between this and the Tuono 660. So in this video, I'm going to try and avoid drawing too many comparisons between the bikes. If you want to know how this compares directly to the Tuono version, you're going to have to wait for that video. But this is really all about what this is like to ride on its own as a first ride. Now this bike is brand new, it's got about 40 miles on the clock, so I have to be a little bit careful. I can't give it the full spanking until it's got a few more miles on, but I'm hoping I can get a few on it today so we can start to open her up. But first of all, let's power her up. Firing it up. Sounds very much like the Torono. Stop it Chops, you're not meant to be comparing it to the Torono. Quick shifter and a blipper come as standard on this machine. Let's try the blipper. Very nice. Quick shifter. Really nice quick shifter, really smooth. The air goes on this. You know, this this is a this is a, like, first of all, this isn't a super sport 600. It isn't, you know, this is more of a comfortable position. The bars are what I'd call midway, so they're not full on down on a super sport, they're not right up on a naked, they're sort of slightly down, the clip-ons are above the yokes is the important thing. So even though this is a sports bike, it is exceptionally comfortable. Out of the way, which <laughs> he might come past me in a minute. So it's not too exaggerated on the position, and I, and I really like the position. I find this sort of middle of the road position absolutely perfect. It's got all the benefits of feel from the front wheel and feedback as a, as a full-on super sport, but a little bit more comfortable because you're up a couple of inches at the front. So, of the, on your, on your, so you've got a bit of weight on your wrist, but not too much. Your legs are tucked up a little bit on this, but it's not as bad as say the, you know, the fire blade or something like that. It's all very comfortable, there's the high beam again, for a sports bike. Power figures is 100 horsepower from this engine, 100 horsepower and I think 67 newton meters of torque, which, you know, is down probably 15, 20 horsepower on like proper Super Sport 600s. But Super Sport 600s, first of all, you can't buy them anymore. <laughs> Not in the UK, nobody sells a Super Sport 600. The ZX6R died this year because it couldn't make Euro 5. So no, you can't buy a Super Sport 600 brand new anymore. But Super Sport 600s, they may make the extra bit of power, but they lack torque. And this is where this 100 horsepower 660cc engine delivers. It's got lovely bottom end grunt. And you know, for a road bike, that is what you want. 
what Apulia say is this is half of the RSV4 engine, so it's a parallel twin, half the front cylinders of the RSV4, but obviously slightly uh, different capacity because half of 1100 would be 550, this is 650. So they've adjusted the stroke or they've changed the bore size, <laughs> I'm not sure which, remember Josh, you're going to be running this in. <laughs> But this eggs you on, this has all the fun and engagement as, as, the, as what the RS34 has. I don't feel like I'm on a, on, a, on, a, on a middleweight here, you know? I feel like this is as much fun as, as what a, a full-on, full-fat RS34-1100 would be. And this bike is really exciting me. I mean, I've ridden like the CBR650R. That bike left me wanting more, you know? I was a bit disappointed with that machine. You know, I thought it was going to be a super sport. It wasn't a super sport, and you could really tell it wasn't a super sport. At the moment, I, I, you know, this feels like a super sport, even though it doesn't quite have the, the top end power. Everything else about it is feeling like a super sport bike. The tyres aren't even properly bedded in. So <laughs> good jobs, keep, keep it sensible, sir. Suspension is KYB, so you know this is really the, the same suspension as what's on the Tuono, but this has a slightly less travel in the forks. Identical rear shock, uh, KYB rear shock. It, it only has preload and dampening adjustments, so there's no full fat, fully adjustable suspension on this. Bike weighs 184 kilos wet, so it is nice and light. Proper super sport light. You know, actually lighter than a lot of super sports. It's a very, very light machine. It actually feels it doesn't it, it doesn't feel massively light though. Tuono felt more agile and nimble. I know they brought the front wheel in on the Tuono to you know to reduce the rake to make to waking it up. This is uh, with the standard rake, it's a little bit more sedate at changing direction you can't really you know you can you know it is a light bike but as compared to Tuono it feels a little bit heavier a little bit more definitely more stable definitely more stable feeling but it just feels like a proper sports bike an absolutely proper super sport sports bike brilliant third gear 2000 revs look at that for Paul Bloody marvellous, isn't it? You, because it's an Aprilia, I love the shape of the Aprilia tank. You can really lock your legs under the tank. And if you do want to get out of the seat and just move around a little bit, it makes it really, makes the bike feel very stable and you feel very positive on it because you can just lock your leg in. Take that weight with your outside leg. Look at the gravel in the road there, be a little bit careful there. But it's just lovely in the bend, it gives loads of confidence. You know, and you're not going silly speeds. The beauty of a 100 horsepower bike is you can wring its neck. Not that I am, I'm running it in, obviously. But you can wring its neck without going to jail. You know, yes, you can still get done for speeding, obviously. But you're getting, you know, you're revving it, you're, you're getting the thrill of the revs and you're not doing jail speeds as quickly. <laughs> Obviously you will be in the end if you keep on doing that. But you've got, you know, you're not, like, if, like the uh, new Fireblade, 100 miles an hour in first gear. I saw 100 miles an hour in first gear on the new Fireblade, on a private track, obviously. That's ridiculous! How can you ride that machine on the road and it doesn't start kicking in until 8,000 revs? So even in first gear, the power's not coming in to probably 60, 70 miles an hour. So you cannot ride it fast without probably breaking the speed limit. Just to feel what that bike can give you, you've got to break the speed limit. These bi those bikes are just getting so, you know, so far. It flips over nicely there. I think the future is with these middleweights for the road. I absolutely do. You know, everywhere you go, it's speed cameras these days. 
average speed cameras as well, so that really scuppers you. There's only these sorts of roads where you, you're free to have a bit of fun. How, it won't be much longer until you're getting average speed cameras through every little town, e everywhere. You know, that's coming. And uh, litre sports bikes in that environment are just pointless. Oh, what else to tell you about this absolutely uh, stunning bike? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Let's uh, let's go for the uh, let's go for the individual without the wheelie control on. Yeah, that's got the I can tell straight away the individual map has been set with the more aggressive throttle response. I can tell that. Just by switching it on, you know, I can tell that's what they've done. <laughs> Sounds amazing! The sound of it through the, the induction roar, it sounds very much like it's uh, RSV4 brother. Like it's big brother, it really does. It's definitely got that howl, it's got a howl. Yeah, not quite the same as a V4, but... Still absolutely beautiful. Oh, I don't think I can risk getting past this chap. Uh, you bugger. What high beams on? So electronics wise, it also has an IMU. So all of the traction control, the ABS is all lean sensitive. So you've got all of that extra security that if you're on the corner and you do have to slam the anchors on, the bike knows it's on its side and it'll, and it'll give you that extra support with the ABS. Let's talk about the boring stuff. Mirrors are a little bit vibey. There's a few little vibes in the mirrors when you're on the power. Vibrations from the bike, there's a few. It's a parallel twin, you know, a 270 degree crank parallel twin. The bikes do vibrate a little bit. It's not excessive, it's no worse than the Trident, the, the Africa twin, I always say this. You know, but there, there is a little bit of vibration. Not, but not not buzzy. It's not buzzy like a straight four can be. It's just you know it's lower frequency than that. It's not irritating. That that's the point. The throttle response is lovely. It's beautifully fueled. Aprilias normally are beautifully fueled. You know the throttle grips themselves. There's no waggle in the throttle grip. There's no play in the grip, which I don't like. It's all very well. Uh, very, it feels very well screwed together. I'm surprised how good this suspension feels because I thought looking at it it was a bit budget and you're going to outride the suspension quite quickly but I'm not so sure. Even me being an 18 and a half stone 6 foot 2 fatty <laughs> it's fine. I think the weak point of the bike is the rear shock so I think if you did want to upgrade the suspension I think the rear shock would be the way to go perhaps like a nitron unit or something like that but for me i think on the maybe on the track you could uh, you could run out of adjustment on that rear shot or bottom it out you know especially my way but here now feels absolutely fine it's exceeded my expectations when i saw this was announced was it year before last this was at the this was mentioned at the, the icma show and stuff i thought wow that looks so good so so good and then the launch came out and people rode it and they said well actually you know it's not a super sport bike it's it's dialed back a little bit and i thought oh that is disappointing but riding it now i'm it's exceeded the expectations maybe my expectations were set lower a little bit because of that but i don't think so i think it is incredible i absolutely love this and i, I could see myself owning this the problem with the Tuono, and I'm going to give you a little insight into that one, is it, it feels smaller than this. This doesn't look, you know, this looks as big as a litre sports bike does. This looks as big as its RSV4 brother. So being a bigger guy, these middleweights are sometimes just too small. And you just look silly riding them. They feel fine to ride, but you just look like a gorilla riding a pit bike. And they're just too small for us bigger guys. It's all right if you're a shorter double your chat like that TMF fella it's fine but if you're a bit of a larger guy a bit of girth to you a bit of height to you then they're they're really too small and and that's why I don't own a street triple RS or a Duke 890R because they're too small for me whereas this with the fairing it looks as big I still look too big on it don't get me wrong 
but I don't feel as silly riding this as what I do a, a little naked middleweight. This feels like it's a decent size. It feels more spacious to ride than the RSV4. If I was riding a full-on Super Sport, I'd be thinking about getting off and having a rest now because of the weight on your wrists. What's also really good of this is it's got cruise, not only has it got that, it's also got bloody cruise control as well. Bang. Ah, so if you do get any weight on your wrists, then uh, bang the cruise on. Have a little break, read a paper, get your phone out. Don't do that. What a bike. What a weapon. Actually, if I brought my wallet out with me, I might have forgotten my wallet. Luckily, I've got two blobs of fuel because, yes, thank the Lord, it's got a fuel gauge. Uh, let's turn that cruise control off because, good as it is, it flashes like you left your indicator on. That's the cruise control button. Why have they got to make that green? It's, it's a bit ridiculous. Right, through town, I'm going to go into the commute mode. Yeah, that, that's much nicer in town. And you don't have to turn it off, you don't have to close the throttle, just change the map on the fly. No bother. Yeah, that's definitely softened it up now. That's, that's nicer in town. I had it on the uh, individual mode, which was the most aggressive throttle map. That is better. Better for town. Oh, you get out, love. All right, let's just get some petrol. Let's see how big its hole is, because this is another criticism of the RSV4 and Toronto not got a very big hole. Neutral? Well, you can find neutral on the move. What's it like finding neutral when you stand still? Yeah, found it then. Neutral? Yeah, seems okay. Why have I got my wallet? Bingo. Oh, it's got a little hole. It's got a little hole in there. Makes it really difficult to fill. To fill. Move my card. What's wrong with my car? I also like to fuel because it's got a little hole there. Oh, you can tuck it in though. Might be all right actually. Oh, it's full. It's got a 15 litre fuel tank, so a reasonably a reasonable sized fuel tank as well for a smaller bike. Onwards, uh, I can see a lot of people selling their litre bikes and, and going back to something like this. I don't think it is... It's going to go back to the uh, individual mode. I don't think this is too much of a step down from your litre bikes. It doesn't give you a beginner feel, this bike. I think that you know, people will downgrade, if you like, from their litre bikes to one of these. There's no reason. It has all the fun and thrills and performance, grip, feedback, excitement of, of a litre bike. But just in a more sensible package. I'm very impressed with this, I have to say. Right, let's go for a little walk around. What we'd do, we're going to uh, going to Goodwood. Classic Goodwood. Oh, it looks like there's something going on. Looks like some sort of event going on here. Shut for COVID. It's shut, Joe. I think it's shut. Well, there she is outside of the iconic Goodwood motor circuit. And how good does she look in that purple and red? Oh yeah, I really, really like that colour scheme. I thought it was maybe, I didn't, you know, I wasn't sure at first, but I really, really like it. The colour is so purple, it's so it's such a deep colour. It's, uh, yeah, it's really nice. I think they've done a really good job on the colour schemes. I mean, just triumph, take note. <laughs> take note. That is how you colour a motorcycle. Fantastic, really brave, really bold, love it. We go through it quite quickly because if you watch my Torono one, it's really much the same. But uh, the front end is obviously very different. You've got a full fairing. You've got these little mini scoops at the side, which are nice. The KYBs are gold rather than black on the RS660. Let's turn it on so you can see those DILs. They look nice. Integrated indicators, which is nice. Let me try and show you that again. There you go. So when you indicate, the DRL on the side you're indicating, if it doesn't go right off completely, it just dims. So you can see the indicators more. But uh, yeah, it keeps, it keeps the lines nice, keeps the indicators off it. I really like that. I don't know how they got on with the US versions because you're not allowed LED indicators in the US, are you? Turn the indicator off. The DL goes back to full brightness. There's that motor. Fantastic 660cc beauty. The only things I don't like, it's a little bit plasticky here. This is all plastic. It would be great to have 
like a carbon, when obviously carbon fibre ones will come as people start producing them, but have that in carbon certainly. Also the side panels, I'd like to see those in carbon as well. This plasticky piece on the swinging arm would be nice in carbon as well. The bike has the same arrangement with the rear seat cow, whereby there's a, there's a luggage rack underneath. Very clever. So you can see on this one, you can turn off the wheelie control independently of the traction control. You cannot do that on the Tuono. Trips, etc. Max speed, 87 on me. Uh, fuel consumption, ah, fuel consumption, uh, fuel consumption. Average fuel consumption, 57 miles per gallon. That ain't bad, is it? So there we go, a very, very quick look at the RS660. Looks beautiful. Like I say, it doesn't look any smaller than a full-on litre sports bike in my eyes, really. Take the rear foot pegs off. Rear seat cowl on it, tail tidy, obviously. And you're good to go. Absolutely beautiful. Right, let's jump back on. Hit it. Another thing I like it, if you're filtering, bang. <laughs> Mirrors are really, really easy to fold up. If you go, you know, if you are using this com to commute on, you've got the luggage rack, you know, it's got so much, much practicality about it. Luggage rack and foldable mirrors. Unbelievable. I don't think there's any heated grips though. It's got the cruise control, of course, but I don't think, there's no heated grip standard, certainly. I don't know if heated grips are an option. I don't know, not normally on Aprilia's, not normally any heated grips, even as options. So, you could do with heated grips if you want to make this thing ultimately practical. So there we go guys, thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves coming with me on a little spin on this machine. I've certainly enjoyed myself. This is incredible. And I've got to say a massive thank you to Wheels Motorcycles for lending me this. This is their demo, so they've got a demo. They've got this demo. They've also got a demo of the Tuono 660. Not at the moment, because they're both at my house. But uh, they will be back with wheels very soon. So give them a ring, book yourself a test ride. I'm not sure when they open again fully, but uh, when you can actually walk into a dealership and look at bikes, you've got to make appointments, but uh, you can ride them, you can demo them. So reach out to wheels, get yourself a ride, and let me know what you think to these. Ride both, see which one you prefer, and let me know. Well, there we go, guys. Thanks very much for watching, and I will see you on the next video. Cheers. Power level one which is full power. <laughs> <laughs>